Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome back to the Correct Views. Sam I.B. reporting for The Media Speaks, and you can find them at themediaspeaks.com. Also, this is my official entry for the InfoWars Paul Revere contest. And for those of you that might be saying, hey, wait a minute, it's kind of a short entry. For those of you that might be thinking he's doing this because he wants to let Alex Jones know that he's still out there. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm not going to pull any punches at all. Guys, welcome to The Correct Views. I'm out here so that you guys can hear it. And if you want to hear a more official entry, go ahead, do me a favor. Check out Becoming Paul Revere. The Media Speaks is dropping that. I'm working on a video for passing time. Hopefully that's going to be done in time. This is The Correct Views. I am showing to Alex Jones how I can be a commentator which I've been doing for quite some time, and I'm going to be doing it on this episode. So thank you very much for listening, and we're going to get straight into the news here. Check this out. This is from businessinsider.com. Lindsey Graham, the notion that we would read the Boston suspect, his Miranda rights, is absolutely crazy. Now, I put a question on my Facebook page that said this. Correct Views was asking, let's pretend the absolute worst piece of human filth garbage that ever lived came back to life and he was an American citizen. We're going to use Adolf Hitler. He works for me to be one of the worst. So we're calling the worst. Even the American citizen, the imaginary reincarnation of Adolf Hitler that we just created, even he deserves his Miranda rights before we put him to death. Listen to this, people. Listen what he's saying, not about who he's saying it about. Listen, please, to what it is that he is saying. U.S. Senator Lindsey Graham said Monday that it would be, quote, absolutely crazy, end quote, to treat a Boston bombing suspect Duzakar Tsarnazev as anything but a, quote, enemy combatant. He says, as he has done since Friday, Graham suggested that the 19-year-old Tsarnazev would be interrogated without being read his Miranda rights. Now, for those of you that don't know, what Miranda rights are the, uh, what you hear in all the movie TV shows. You have the right to remain silent. What you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. All of that you heard on Dragnet. Well, Lindsey Graham somehow doesn't know that when you are charged with a federal offense, whether you are as guilty as Ron Jeremy working in porn, you are in fact, your Miranda rights are part of of due process. What if you are as guilty as sin? That's why I just used the silly analogy that I just used. Anyone that is an American citizen and is arrested on this kind of a charge deserves their Miranda rights. Oh, but what if they're evil? Miranda rights. What if they're guilty be a Miranda rights? We are all deserving of our Miranda rights. And once you take it away from the worst of the worst, then you can take it away from your garden variety criminal who may or may not be guilty. Do you see, my friends, where this is going? I could care less about the trial. A first-year law student could do this trial, Graham said Monday on Fox and Friends. Well, it's rather interesting, Mr. Graham, that you get to decide such things. That you, that you are the, what, the new god of America. These things are up to you to decide. I want to gather intelligence. So what does he know about terrorist organizations within our country? Does he know of other terrorist activity coming our way? That's a national security inquiry. He's a potential enemy combatant. He has ties with overseas terrorists. He's clearly a radical Islamist. I would hold him under that theory. So you're so sure that he's guilty. Okay. He still deserves his Miranda rights. This makes me sick. 
This idea uh, that the only way that we can question him about national security matters is to go through his lawyer or turns it over to the terrorist and their lawyer controlling information to protect us all. That's crazy. And that is absolutely crazy. This man should be held and questioned under law of war. No. We happen to like the laws that are already in the United States. We happen to like the Constitution. And we happen, many of us, Mr. Graham, you might be surprised to find this out, many of us are in favor of everybody getting their due process and their Miranda rights, jerk. All right, what else do we got here? This is, um, you know, I, I was very happy to see the way that this article went after I read a bit of it. It's from Zero Hedge. Merkel to Europe, prepare to cede sovereignty. Uh, for those of you top 40 fans, that does mean uh, prefer, prepare to get rid of your national identity to some degree. I am a fan, I, well not a fan, I, well, a fan would be, I am a fan of documentaries of the Second World War and Hitler. That does not mean I am a fan of World War II or Hitler. What I'm saying is, when it comes to matters of World War II, much like Fukushima, as a topic, I follow this extensively. I follow it a lot. As a matter of fact, when I said that I was going to be posting this tonight, the beautiful behind-the-scenes queen, Christel, mentioned that I should use this story because I follow it extensively. And for those of you new viewers that might be here because of Alex Jones, listen to this. The reason that I follow history in terms of the World War II era in vain so closely is because I do believe that to some degree that the direction that our country is headed in is that of a fascist. Now, don't confuse that to mean Nazism in terms that I think uh, Obama or George W. Bush or Nancy Pelosi or anybody else wants to open up concentration camps to kill Jewish Americans. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about the other side of it. I'm talking about the way that the corporations and the government work together toward a common goal that feeds the elitist and military structure. I'm talking about that side of fascism. For those of you that do know a little bit of history, you do know that that is what Germany was very much intending to do when Hitler was in power. So, or with that in mind, listen to this, because I would argue, as many other people would, as you will see in this article, it's not over, people. To some degree, the elitists and the Germans, but the Germans are not alone in this. This is not a German issue. The elitists want us in the direction of a one-world government. It doesn't need to be a Nazi flag. It is that sick ideal that I am addressing here. Once again, Zero Hedge, the liquidity tsunami that started in September of 2012 in the Mariner Eccles building and continued with the BOJ's own epic QE-easing expansion three weeks ago has so far provided the impetus for Europe to kick the can of its inevitable dissolution for a few more months. Yet slowly but surely the market is starting to read through the artificial levels implied by Italian and Spanish bonds, it writes, driven by recycled ECB funding via bank and repo conduits, and of course Japanese carry cash and rumblings of a return to crisis conditions are back. It goes on and you need to listen to this because this is very important. As always happens, once the crisis talk is back, so is discussion of a fiscal union. Sure enough, earlier today, Germany's Angela Merkel once again reminded just what the stakes are in order to achieve a truly stable and sustainable European Union. Nothing short of ceding sovereignty to Germany. Now, I'm not going to read this whole article. I've told you where you can find it. Once again, it's a Merkel to Europe, prepare to secede, excuse me, prepare to cede sovereignty. What she's saying is in order to make the banking structure safe in the European Union, which is basically 
uh, the first step in a one-world currency, or perhaps maybe three. I've heard arguments that say that China, Europe, and the Amero, three currencies that are all tied into one banking uh, money fiat structure. That's what the European Union is. Is she saying in order to keep that stable and to keep that strong, then certain countries are going to have to give up their sovereignty in order for that to happen. What that means is that nations need to give up a little bit of their freedom or a little bit of their culture in order to put themselves in a one world government. When in fact, that one world government could lead to the banksters pulling money out of you and you and you and your private banking account as seen by the puppeteers of the European Union itself, or whatever one world, uh, few world currency there is. That is exactly what Adolf Hitler wanted. And that's what they're still trying to do. For those of you that are Christians, that is exactly what is warned about in the Bible. For those of you that are not Christians, it doesn't matter whether you believe in it or not. What's important is that you understand that the people that do believe in it, which are our leaders, tend to be siding on the side of Satan. And it doesn't matter whether or not you believe in God or the devil. It matters that these people do, and they are choosing the side of evil. And that probably does not mean the side that is going to benefit you, whether or not you believe in God or not. Marketwatch.com, and this ties into the last story, Germany's support of the Euro wanes. So you've got, uh, you've got Merkel over there, the great esteemed Merkel, saying that in order to make a stronger Euro, we need to do blah, 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 and sign our lives away to the devil, when in fact, the average citizen in Germany isn't all too hyped about this. But it doesn't matter. Just like Hitler didn't care whether or not you agreed with his policies, they were going to happen. This is by Daryl Delamade, Washington Market Watch. German finance minister Wolfgang Schlebel effectively torpedoed Europe's plan, Europe's excuse me, plan for joint banking supervision over the weekend, raising further doubts about Germany's commitment to the euro. While Chancellor Angela Merkel has called for more Europe, the banking union, as well as closer fiscal and political interrogation, has hatchet man Schreiber systematically obstructs progress toward these goals. At the end of the European Union finance minister's meeting in Dublin this weekend, Schreiber insisted that a revision of the EU treaties would be necessary to proceed with the banking union which officials had previously agreed was absolutely essential to underpinning the common currency. A banking union, it says, only makes sense if we also have rules for restructuring and resolving banks, he said. But if we want European institutions for that, we will need a treaty change. This ties into what Merkel was just saying that it is somehow okay for nations to change their banking laws so that the euro can stay intact. The euro is the monetary equivalent to what a swastika was to European unity. Do you understand that? It is the death of sovereignty in Europe. And to whatever degree, degree it works there, that is the degree that it is going to be implemented here with parts of South America, America, and Canada. Listen to me, people. That's why this show is called The Correct Views. And you can look this up yourself. This is not conspiracy. I let you know where all of this can be found at. Um, and this is from torrentfreak.com. Now, I have heard back and forth again and again that it does include BitTorrent. It doesn't include BitTorrent. You know what? It doesn't matter. The point is that once you start assaulting the privacies and the rights of anyone on the Internet, then you can do it to anyone that you choose, whenever you choose to. 
Massive BitTorrent and CyberBlocker domain crackdown underway updated. In what is being described as the biggest domain crackdown since U.S. Homeland Security seized more than 70 domains in 2010, and that was illegal, Italy has targeted more than two dozen BitTorrent, CyberBlocker, and other file-sharing sites. It goes on. The public prosecutor of Rome has ordered the blocking of RapidGator uploaded, BitShare, NowVideo, Video Premium, and many others, warning that he will progress the action internationally in order to properly seize their domains. In a nutshell, friends, what they are trying to do is make it so that if you download illegal movies, in theory, you could be busted for doing so. The reason they are illegal is because you didn't legally download them and the people that were supposed to be paid for it didn't get paid for it. Problem with that is, among others, is I'm in a band. The name of that band is Passing Time. Look up the Alexandrian Solution, Passing Time, on YouTube. I upload my videos and my music on these sites. And when you shut down these sites, you shut down the way that you communicate with other people. Now, the argument often goes on to say, well, Sam, if nothing illegal was done on your page, then maybe you won't be targeted if, for instance, uh, Pirate Bay was to stay active. What if someone comes to my house and uses my computer and downloads something? Copyrighted. They can come after me. Now, you can argue, well, Sam, you're supposed to be responsible for everything that happens. Yeah, well, you know what? You've just shut down every internet business in America because you can't keep track of what everyone downloads. And if you shut down these kind of sites and block them from the ability, then they've now stopped people from coming to your establishment because some people use them perfectly legal, such as the way that I just told you that Passing Nine uses it. Point is, it is not up to the government to decide these kinds of things. It's not. It is not up to the government to be the policeman for Hollywood, for ASCAP, for BMI, or for anybody else. I'm going to give you the update. Contrary to earlier reports, there are no BitTorrent sites included among the 27 sites. It says the full list is published at the bottom of this article and a complete list of all the block sites in Italy can be found here. And there's a list to it. A link to it, I should say. Stop Sispa. This is being loaded at 4.23, in the morning is when I'm recording it. Don't let this happen, people. Fight Sispa and fight for your rights while you still have any left. The last thing I want to get to, many of you know that watch The Correct Views, please do me a favor and subscribe if you haven't. You know that I like to end with something strange or something odd and something that you won't get anywhere else and you're going to get to see it right here. This is from LiveScience.com. Meet the tarantula as big as your face. It's big, it's hairy, and it's venomous. The newest spider to give arachnophobes the willies. A tarantula has been discovered in the island nation of Sri Lanka. Uh, P-O-E-C-I-L... O-T-H-E-R-I-A, Rege, R-A-G-A-E-I-A, for those of you that want the Latin name. With a leg span of eight whopping inches and enough venom to kill mice, lizards, small birds, and snakes, according to Sky News, the crawler is colored in subtle markings of gray, pink, daffodil, yellow. Uh, you know what? Anytime they find a new species, I'm excited. Because we are led to believe that we are only destroying the planet. And there's so many things on it that we haven't discovered. The reason that I wanted to include this in such an important entry, such as an InfoWars submission, because I think it's important to know that there's a lot of things that are much bigger than we are. There are still species and creatures on this planet that we haven't even discovered yet. And there are a lot, thing, a lot of things more important than Kim Kardashian, Kanye West, President Obama, 
and the lies surrounding the mainstream media. Wake up, people. Look at the beauty that is all around you and realize that we are being cheated by our leaders. Thank you for listening to The Correct Views. Thank everyone at the, the InfoWars.com, Prison Planet, everyone associated with Alex Jones for announcing these kinds of contests. Please donate to the show if you can. Thank you for listening, friends. Good night, and God bless.